Hello fellow geeks and welcome back to Running Geek Girl. My name is Heather, the Running Geek Girl, and I'm glad you're here today. Now for a lot of us, races are still shut down, but some smaller races are opening back up. There are some trail races that are running back up, and there's a lot of virtual races that are definitely still on. So you've been walking, maybe you've taken the step to doing a Couch to 5K program, and you're ready to take on your first race. So let's talk about 10 different things that you need to ask yourself when you're choosing what your first race is going to be. Number one, is this just FOMO? I know that I've had a problem in the past of just signing up for races because I knew a lot of people that were going to be signing up for it. Yes, I had definite fear of missing out. But if you're sure that this is something that you want to do and you're not just doing it because you feel the pressure to sign up for a race because maybe a lot of people that you know are doing it, then move on to your next question. Number two, what is it that you're wanting? You need to determine what you want to accomplish by running a race. Are you running just for fun? Are you running to see if you can complete a certain distance? Is this part of training for a much larger race? Are you running to help raise money for a specific charity that means something to you? If you figure out what your end goal is, that helps you narrow down what opportunities are available to you. Number three, how far can you realistically run? Races can be as short as one mile and they can be as long as 100 miles or more. So you need to think about where you fit comfortably into that spectrum. If you're new to running and you wanna get a kind of race day experience, then I would suggest going for something shorter, a one mile or a 5K. Plus, if it's something short and it's your first time, then you may be able to get other people to join you. Now, if you're running because you want to go a certain distance, then you need to think about the steps that you need to follow to get to that goal. If your goal is to run a half marathon, your first race probably should not be that half marathon. Try running a 5K, put a 10K in there somewhere. Some places even offer a 15K or a 10 mile race. This not only helps you prepare for longer and longer races, but it gets you used to the process of race day itself how you're going to approach it as far as your time, your schedule, your pace, and so on. Because sometimes, depending on the size of the race, race day can really be overwhelming if you're not prepared for it. Those shorter races can help you gain confidence in yourself, so when you're ready to tackle a longer race, then you have the state of mind to be able to do it. Number four, how much time do you have to commit to a race? Races are not just race day itself. There's a lot of training, there's a lot of practice, there's a lot of experimenting that go all the way up to race day. So if you're kind of a person that has a crazy schedule, then you may not be able to put in the time to run a marathon. For example, some marathon plans will have you running as much as 22 miles at a time, and that takes up a big chunk of your morning. If you don't have that time available to give to running, then you may want to concentrate on shorter races. There are a lot of online training plans that kind of give you an idea of how much time that you would need to dedicate towards longer races, so you can take a look at those. In fact, coming up soon on this channel, I'm going to have some comparisons of online racing programs, so make sure that you're subscribed so that you can get informed when those videos come out. Number five, if you're going to run a long race, are there shorter races leading up to that race day? If you're like me, then you like to include some shorter races, some 5Ks and 10Ks on the way to a half marathon. It's great because I can use that 10K as part of my long run for the week, and plus I get all kinds of course support and crowd support. I get the company of other runners. It helps to keep me from feeling overwhelmed. It helps spice up my training program, keeps me from getting bored, and it helps keep me accountable because I know on that day I'm gonna have to be able to run 10K, so I better be ready. Number six, what weather are you comfortable with? Do you like running in warmer weather or would you rather run when it's cold outside? This makes a huge difference. If you're used to running in warmer weather, but you decide that you want to run a marathon that's happening in the winter, that's something that you need to prepare for. Also look at the weather conditions from previous years that that race has gone on. Has there been rain before? Have there been low temperatures before? Have there been high temperatures before? That way you'll get an idea of the kind of things that you can expect on that race day. If you're really not sure whether you're comfortable running in the heat or in the cold, then try to aim for something that goes on in the fall, which is kind of a happy medium. Other than that, you need to be aware of what running in different types of weather is going to require. 
For instance, in cold weather, you need to be able to run while wearing layers that you can shed easily if you need to. During the summer, it's not like you can really take a whole lot of clothes off, but it does give you the experience of perhaps taking an ice bath after your run. If you're going to run in humid weather, then you need to learn how to balance electrolytes. I have a video, and I'm gonna to link to it here and in the description box below, about different ways to approach your hydration technique. If the weather is hot, not only do you have to be aware of your hydration, but you also need to be a little more aware of your heart rate. You may have to change up your pace to something that's a little slower than you're used to. Just keep in mind that there's no weather that's completely unrunnable other than ice would be my thing. If it's icy outside, you may want to stay inside. But I've seen races happen in the pouring rain before. I have run a race while it was snowing. I've run a race in pretty hot and humid weather. So just be prepared that the weather is going to make a difference in how you're going to run your race. Number seven, where is your race? You may choose a race that's closer to home, or you may have been dreaming of traveling to go to a specific race that's somewhere farther away. If you choose something local, then there's less stress, uh, there's no travel stress, you can sleep closer to home, you know what to expect as far as the food. If you're running something local, then chances are you know the area where the course is being run, and therefore you can tell about how much you have left while you're running. The upside of traveling means that you get to see some different parts of the world that you may not have seen otherwise. You can immerse yourself in the race atmosphere of a new place, but it does mean a lot more logistical planning on where you're going to stay, where you're going to eat, and so on. So that adds a little bit to the travel stress. Also take a look at the general area that you're going to be running, the actual streets, roads, trails, and so on. If you're trying to achieve a, a PR, then you may not want to go for a race that has a lot of elevation changes, a lot of hills, and so on. But if you're up for a challenge and you wanna run something that's a little bit different, take a look at courses that do have lots of hills and bridges and different changes in the terrain. If you're used to trail running, maybe try a road race for a change. Find something that has a scenic kind of run, maybe something on the beach or through the mountains. Whatever you choose, make sure that you check the elevation chart on the race's website so that you can get an idea of what to expect. That's a mistake that I made before my first half marathon. I did not check the elevation chart when I should have. There were a lot of hills that I was not prepared for. Also think about where you normally train and do you want to find a course that's sort of similar to that? If you're used to doing an out and back, maybe find a race that does the same thing. If you're used to running in a loop, maybe find a race that goes in a loop. If you're used to running trails, remember that every trail is different. Are you used to running on a groomed path? Are you used to running on rocks or through mud? Is there a water crossing? Is this a mountain course? So make sure that you have done the research ahead of time to know what you're going to be running into. Number eight, how big is this race? Some people are really big fans of huge races with thousands and thousands of runners. You get a lot of energy from the crowd and from other runners around you. Some runners are not as comfortable with that. They prefer more of a small town field with a smaller field of runners. You also have to think about the process surrounding the race, such as packet pickup. It can be kind of hectic for a bigger race, but a lot more relaxed for a smaller race. Either one of those can affect your mental game. If this is your first race, you may want to consider running a smaller local race that's going to be a lot more relaxed and a lot easier to navigate. In the end, it's all about your preferences. Are you motivated by having lots of runners around you? Go for a bigger race. If you like to have lots of space to maneuver, then smaller races kind of allow you to stay in your own zone. Are you looking for a PR? Remember that the more people there are on the course, the more time you have to spend getting around other runners that may be in your way. Are you needing an ego boost? Sometimes those smaller fields can do a little more when you look at your overall placement and see yourself close to or on the podium. Do you love lots of crowd noise and funny signs? You're more likely to see those at bigger races. So just a few things to think about. What size race do you wanna run? Number nine. How much is it going to cost? This is something that a lot of people don't think about going into a race. Of course, your larger races are going to cost more money because they will require more support. Smaller races, more local races are usually a lot less expensive. If you're running a local race, you don't have to worry about travel expenses. If you're running a destination race, then you'll have to think about your lodging, your food, 
travel costs, and so on. I know there are quite a few runners that have an annual budget every year, and they try to stay within that budget when they're considering which races they're going to run. You can go for smaller races early on to save more money and then spend more money towards the end of the year on bigger races once you have more training. And number 10, what support are you going to need? So let's say the race of your dreams is halfway across the country and it's just not possible for you to bring friends or family with you. That may be fine for you. Other people would really rather have that extra support. If you're used to running consistently with the same people, then it may be a little bit of a shock to run without them once race day comes along. Knowing that you have someone on the sidelines that's watching you and waiting for you can be sort of a motivation to keep moving along. It can even give you a little break if you're able to stop for a hug or for them to hand off some fuel to you. Having someone at the finish line waiting for you when you are completely tired can be really reassuring. In the end, there's nothing wrong with running a race by yourself. Most of the races that I've run have just been on my own. But if you're used to having friends and family around you, then you need to consider how this is going to make you feel once race day comes along. So there's some things to consider when you are choosing your first race, be it a local one, a huge one somewhere far away, or even just a virtual race. Whether you're running for the bling, whether you're running because you like the t-shirt or whether you're running because you want to make sure your money is going to the charity of your choice, make sure that the first race that you choose is a positive experience for you. If you found this information helpful, make sure that you let me know by giving me a thumbs up or leaving a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on social media. You can find me across most platforms under the name Running Geek Girl. I'm glad you could be here and I can't wait to see you next time. Happy running guys. check the elevation 